Quite a load of uncertainty hit us yesterday. <laughs> We have some really big news to go through in this particular episode, so we have some buyouts happening, some sequel announcements, some dates set for a lot of stuff, so but we're going to get through all that, so stay tuned. Let's just start things off with the big news. Let's just get this one out of the way before we get into the other stuff, but yes, apparently AMC Networks has bought Sentai Holdings LLC. This means that all the brands, including Sentai Filmworks, High Dive Streaming Service, as well as the Cool Japan Fund has actually apparently been all acquired by AMC. This, of course, is very uncertain news for a lot of people. Obviously, we've had a lot of buyouts recently, and to have this one company I was rooting for that was a small company that was doing their own thing, just getting bought up by a big corporation, it, it's very, it's sad news to me. I was really rooting for Sentai Filmworks to really be able to kind of stand up against all the big corporations, to be able to do their own thing and not have any limitations given to them, but unfortunately, all things must come to an end, I guess. And it's not as if AMC themselves is a huge corporation. They are, they're big. They're about 2,100 employees. So they're significant, but they're not, of course, like Sony levels of big. But it's still, it, it's still a little bit of a, a letdown for me, I guess. I don't think really in regards to our fears that we have with things like Crunchyroll getting bought by Sony, I don't necessarily see this as a, I'm not so fearful as with Crunchyroll and Sony. I think AMC is not really a company that is too big on censorship, but they do have stuff there that, again, most anime fans will probably be pretty upset about. They're known for doing certain things that are more for Western culture, but I still have my hopes that they're not going to do too much. I don't think they're really going to have their hands in it that much. At the same time, the big question mark really does come, what will this mean for Sentai? Are... What benefits are we going to see here? I don't necessarily see that High Dive is going to get a lot of money to start buying up a lot of licenses. I really don't see that. I know there's a lot of people that are positive out there, and I, I give them all the respect for being that positive. We generally keep positive, but I don't necessarily see this as a thing of, oh, good, now Sentai is going to buy up a whole bunch of licenses, and now they're going to fight against Sony. I don't see that. I don't see AMC coming in here and going, okay, we just bought you guys. What do you guys need in order to work? And they're like, well, we need like 50 50 licenses, let's let's go at Sony. They're going to go, mm, nah, just keep doing what you're doing. I don't see them getting a whole load of money. Again, AMC is not this big corporation that's going to dump a whole bunch of money into this project. AMC's official press release says, with strong industry relationships and access to key content creators when in Japan, Sentai distributes and curates one of the anime industry's most diverse libraries of top trending and classic titles. With its content available on Crunchyroll, Hulu, and Amazon Prime, among others, Sentai's high dive. I, I like how they're finally, <laughs> they're finally publicly saying that they're the same company. I, I've, I've always loved this thing where it was even with their previous streaming service. Like Sentai Filmworks always acts like they're not the same company. It's technically the same guys that has these two different companies, but it's like, you're the same company. Just, just say they're the same company. And finally, they're saying they're the same company. So... It only took them being bought out before they finally admit it. <laughs> Sentai's high dive, high dive streaming service represents a strong new addition to AMC's network portfolio of fast-growing targeting offerings, which includes AMC Plus, Acorn TV, Shudder, Sundance Now, and ALLBLK. AMC Networks, the global leader in targeting streaming, has forecast its target streaming portfolio will have exceeded 9 million paid subscribers by the end of 2021 with 20 to 25 million paid subscribers by 2025. So here's where we get into the positive I see in this whole thing. This is the this is the thing I can already see right now as a huge positive for the anime fan. And it's not a positive for pure anime fans like myself. Like I, I really don't care about anything AMC offers. I used to watch Walking Dead, but that's about it. But the positive can be that they that some households will like the idea that when a new season comes out, like right now, we have the winter 2022 season. And what do we currently have scheduled for High Dive? I think we only have Teasing Master Takaki-san. And so telling people, okay, hey, you can watch this over here, and somebody already has a whole bunch of subscriptions to watch all these anime, they're like, I don't want to pay more for one title. So the sad thing that always comes with every season with High Dive is as much as I want to support the company, telling people to support the company just for one or three, I think they had four titles last season and only really two of them were big in my opinion. It's a hard sell. And so what this tells me is, an, is a positive is that we could possibly have a similar thing as Netflix where you're saying, yes, you have to get another subscription, but at least you're getting a huge catalog to go with it. And so what this means... And I don't think this will happen immediately, 
Because like we mentioned before with the case of other buyouts, don't expect these portfolios, these catalogs of anime to suddenly just, you're on everything. No, it a lot of these licenses in some cases, in some cases, will have restrictions to where it can be broadcast. Yes, there's a lot of titles where they can distribute. Like Funimation, you can contact them. You can go contact them right now and say, hey, I have a streaming platform and I want to put your title on it. You can buy it from them, but there's restrictions. So I don't necessarily see this as like, if you log into AMC tomorrow, you're going to get the entire catalog of High Dive. I don't see that. But this is a positive because in the future, we'll see this happening where you can, you know, you don't have to get a, just a high dive account and just anime that is old and then like one or two new titles. You could possibly have an AMC account and have access to their entire catalog plus that. So it gives a little benefit to it. Moving on on the press release says Japanese anime is a rapidly growing entertainment category with a highly engaged global fan base propelled by its unique aesthetic and evangelical fans, convention culture, and increased online accessibility. And I think that's another cool thing is because a lot of these conventions where you have a lot of fandoms like, again, Walking Dead, AMC Properties, you'll often see that kind of merging of the two fandoms. A lot of people that love a lot of these more Western comics also like anime. And so a lot of these conventions kind of have both. And so again, you kind of see that kind of merging of the two fandoms that I think they're probably hitting on. And so again, this this already, if we can take this for what it's saying, sounds like they're kind of wanting to get into this industry rather than it just be a buy for the sake of buying. Because obviously the big joke going around right now is that Sony is <laughs> buying a lot of anime companies. And so AMC is over here going, eh, let's, let's, let's find somebody to buy us. We're, we're tired of this stuff, not working too great. Oh, well, Sony's buying a whole bunch of these anime companies. Let's get Sentai Filmworks so that way <laughs> they'll want to buy us. <laughs> but but that's a, it could, it could be. Moving on in quotes with a seasoned team, strong content and direct to consumer offerings for fans around the world. Sentai is a key global player in anime, said AMC Networks intern CEO Matt Blank. This acquisition builds on AMC Networks, already strong IP and franchises and furthers our targeted streaming strategy of super serving <laughs> Passion, passionate audiences with content depth, curation, and community. With the addition of Sentai, we will see an even greater opportunity to build on AMC's networks, position as a global leader in targeting streaming, as we continue to grow a sustainable and long-term profitable streaming business that will be transformative to our company. Jumping down a bit, we have John Ledford, Sentai's founder, says that this like, exciting the acquisition, exciting. Uh, that they it will not change Sentai's mission to deliver most exciting anime content to audience around the world. It will expand it greatly and give our content businesses more distribution, more partnerships, and more scale and more reach. They cannot be ple more pleased. Well, you, you basically sold it. So. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Let's be honest. With every single one of these buyouts that we always talk about, what we hear, we always say, we echo it every time. Do not expect things to change immediately. And he's saying it too. Don't expect it to change immediately. Nothing ever changes immediately with buyouts. It takes time for them to kind of let them settle out, let things kind of cool down, and then change comes. But it never means things don't change. It will change. He's he's being kind. It's going to change, John Ledford. It always changes. These companies don't just buy to let them sit there. It never does. Now, there's cases where they buy so they can kind of, uh, kind of match portfolios, match content, but there's always change that comes eventually. It's not like they're going to let them sit there and do whatever they want to do. Change will come. It just is never immediate. It usually takes one to even five years before things start changing, but they will change. It's always a question mark if it changes for the benefit of the anime fan in our perspective. But yeah, that's it. I, again, like I said, I think my opinion for this whole situation, because obviously people want my opinion on this stuff. That's why they come here. Uh, we won't see anything. Like I said before, it's going to be a while before we see any change happening. Um, the My positive side that I see is that this will give Sentai some more kind of breathing room, less fear of them kind of falling. We have a now a corporation that can basically hold them up if any issues happen. Of course, the fear there happens that if they have issues, that means they'll ax them. We don't really want that to happen. The negatives is that we will see them basically just kind of consume them and just take their properties and just kind of rebrand it completely. I don't see, and again, this is me kind of taking their word into account. Like if this is true, if what they're saying here is not a lie, which let's be honest, corporations don't really always tell the truth. 
it does sound like they're excited about this offering. They're excited to get into this field. It does seem like they're trying to expand their portfolio and they're trying to get into the anime sphere. Is it them trying to compete with things like Sony? We'll have to wait and see, but I don't necessarily see us getting an answer to that anytime soon, but it is exciting for the idea that if they are true to their word, we will see Sentai Filmworks starting to step up and bring in a lot more licenses into their portfolio. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Again, it could just be them trying to get Sony to buy them. But let's get out of that. Let's let's move on to our other news because we do have some other news here. <laughs> I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level has been confirmed to get a second season. So that's extremely exciting. We'll get to see more Isekai Aoyuki in a lot different, more different tone for her. We kind of expressed that with the first season. It's more of a, you know, laid back Aoyuki. We're usually typically into the crazy or loud Aoyuki. So this will be a lot of fun to come back. I had a lot of fun with it. It was definitely a unique take on everything. Definitely the girl billing her harem in another world kind of concept. So a lot of fun, a lot more laid back Isekai than most. Additionally, we have the official website for My Master Has No Tail has posted a new visual and a 2022 premiere for this title. The synopsis has it, the fantasy story takes place in Japan Taisho era between 1912 and 1926. It follows Mamada, a shape-shifting Tanuki girl who dreams of becoming a human. Mamada transforms her outward appearance into a pretty raven-haired human girl and heads to the busting city of Osaka. However, people instantly see through her guise, and one beautiful woman ruthlessly says that to de de deject Mamada, Go back to where you came from. As it turns out, that woman named Bunko is herself a supernatural creature who transformed herself into a Rakugo storyteller. Mamida begs Bunko to become her master and to teach her the ways of playing a human. Now, this is exciting for me based on that last bit there. <laughs> I loved Shogun Roku Rakugo Shinju, so to see another title that will possibly be doing some Rakugo, I'm extremely excited for it. I don't know if they will do such <laughs> as good of a job. This seems more kind of laid back and fun, but Rakugo performance, if it's done right through adaptation, I think can do some really good storytelling. And I guess, like I said before, Rakugo Shinjo did it really fantastic. I've seen a lot of other ones that have tried to do Rakugo performances within their shows. They don't really do it justice, but that one specifically. So I hope this has a kind of a similar feel to that, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on, we have Danmachi Season 4 has been officially confirmed to getting a 2022 premiere. That's super exciting for me. Definitely love the series. It was kind of a letdown here recently, but I'm hoping the series will kind of pick back up. GC staff is going to be working on it, and they have released a new key art for it. So excited for that. We'll see how that one turns out. Moving on, we have My Isekai Life TV anime has a new key art as well as confirmation of a 2022 premiere. Studio Reverie will be working on the project, and of course, this is the one that is from the same writer and artist as The Strongest Sage with the Weakest Crest. So if you watch that show this season, it's going to be premiering in the winter 2022 season and you do enjoy it then you'll definitely want to keep your eyes out for this one our next bit we have Ken Kali's second season apparently that's still happening <laughs> I remember when the show premiered, like, what was it, back in 2017 or 2014 or something like that? Like, a long time ago. And they announced a second season for that immediately, and we've yet to see anything. But apparently, we'll see. They're saying it's going to come in fall 2022. I'll believe it when I see it. I don't think this exists. I really don't. I don't think this exists. This is as bad as Evangelion at this point. For fans of a regular at Magic High, apparently that series has gotten a sequel adaptation announcement already. Of course, we just had the Reminiscent arc just air, and apparently during that, they announced that they were going to have another season. Now, they haven't announced a format yet, but exciting news for those that are fans of that series. Some great news. We kind of talked about the fact that Urusai Yatsura was getting a new anime. Apparently, that is going to be going for four cores, so not just a single release or anything. They're actually going to go for four total seasons. So that can be upwards of like 50 episodes, like an entire year. So it's really awesome to hear that. It's going to be airing on the Noi Tamina block. And apparently we're going to be getting you some more news here in the next 24 hours. So I'll I'll stay look out for that to see if anything interesting comes of that. For our next bit, we have during a live stream, they announced that Teppin, a manga, is going to be getting a anime adaptation in 2022. For those unfamiliar with the series, it essentially follows a comedian group, a group of three girls that become comedians and so I'll be interested to see how that turns out hopefully that's a lot better than something like Might Setsu I really wanted to enjoy that series but I don't think the comedy was really there but again like I mentioned during our review I don't really necessarily think that it was supposed to be funny early on but it had some great moments in it though for those fans of Shadow House including myself super excited to see the sequel coming this year apparently they have released a key art 
as well as confirm the month for the release of Shadow House, which is going to be July. So not too far away. Not like, I guess that's technically far away, but <laughs> I'm excited either way. Really interested to see this one come back. A lot of really great moments in the first season, and I cannot wait for the second season. And for our last bit of news, we have the official website for the anime Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie has revealed both a key art and an April 2nd premiere date. So it's right around the corner. It's going to be in the spring season. For those unfamiliar with the series, the synopsis is Shikimori's seems like a perfect girlfriend, cute, fun to be around, sweet when she wants to be, but she has a cool dark side that comes out under the right circumstances. And her boyfriend Izumi loves to be around when that happens. A fun and funny high school drama with a sassy twist, perfect for fans of Nakatoro-san and Komi Can't Communicate. So definitely interested to see where that one comes. Again, it looks like it's going in more into the teasing girl genre, which again, like I said before, I think is going to be the next big trend outside of Isekais. So stay tuned for that. But that's it. That's all the news I have. Again, quite a big news bit, mostly centered around that buyout. But let me know down in the comments down below. What are your, what are your feelings about this whole situation? Are you okay with this buyout? Are you against the buyout? What about the other news? Anything ever that sounds interesting to you? Definitely let me know in the comments. I love reading them, even though I don't get a chance to reply to every single one of them. But as always, if you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon or through our tips link in the description below. We definitely appreciate everybody that does, and y'all take care.